So we are now on the hunt. How can we get from this if we've started with that? Uh, now, in order to do this, here's a standard uh, way you can find this in many textbooks. Uh, let us make a definition. We will simply define a new variable m so that this statement is true. Uh, 1 over m is equal to r over n. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with having a definition. If you ask me why that's true, I can't uh, tell you. It's just that that will turn out to be convenient. So we're declaring this is true. Now we can rewrite the compound interest formula here, and we'll take out r over n, and we'll put in our new equivalent variable. Uh, and so far, we can't quite see where the progress is coming from, but we haven't done anything that uh, is off or difficult to understand or will lead us into error. Uh, now, here's our definition. And if that's true, we can do a little simple algebra uh, and come up with new understandings, uh, new equations that follow from that one. If we take this and multiply each side by n, uh, then r over n becomes just r, and this fraction becomes n over m. Uh, if we take this equation and multiply both sides by m, that's good algebra if we're doing the same thing to both sides, we're getting an equivalent, uh, then we get this and a new definition for n. So we've if we define r divided by n as equal to 1 over m, uh, then we have at the same time defined n as equal to r times m. So to go back to our formula, which we are attempting to simplify, we got that far by one substitution right here. Uh, now we'll make a second substitution of what we learned here. Um, and now we have removed n from our equation, and we'll see if that helps us. Let's take a moment to look just at the exponent that's attached to that equation. What we have is three variables all multiplied by one another, and we know how multiplying works. If you have three numbers multiplied by each other, any number of, of numbers multiplied together, you can group them and order them in any way you like, and you still get the same result. I mean, 2 times 3 is equal to 3 times 2, and there's no difficulty about that. Uh, so that would be equivalent. I could take out the, uh, the grouping. I can rearrange the order if I want to, and I can put grouping back in. Uh, and then I can do what turns out to be very useful to me that I can say that this power, the power of m multiplied by uh, r multiplied by t, is equal to m raised to this power. Now that may be tricky. You have no doubt uh, been through this before and been uh, forced to learn it, maybe tried to memorize it. I'm always against memorization. memorizing. Don't do that. Memorizing routes your brain uh, as much as possible go back to first principles. I do this all the time. Just go back to the very basic arithmetic that will remind me that the rules I kind of remember are in fact true. So if I have any exponent, I'll, I'll try to demonstrate this principle just by one example. I've got five to the sixth power. Uh, big number. All right. uh, what does it mean? Well, it simply means five multiplied by itself six times. Uh, we know that 6, as I was saying before, has these two equivalents. Um, since numbers multiplied can be grouped in any way we want, if we have 5 multiplied by itself 6 times, we can make 3 pairs. Uh, or if we prefer this way, we can, uh, we can do another grouping. Uh, we can have 2 triplets. And... Uh, what will that mean? Well, uh, 5 to the 6th power is apparently equal to something cubed. That's something to the 3rd power. That is, we have these things. Uh, they are all the same, 5 times 5 in each case. Uh, and we have three of them all multiplied together. 
So 5 to the 6 is 5 times 5 cubed, uh, but 5 times 5 is exactly what we mean by 5 squared. Uh, and so 5 to the 6th is 5 to the 2 times 3, which is the same as uh, 5 to the 2nd power to the 3rd power. And remember, all I'm trying to do uh, is to justify going from this step to this one. Um, and uh, if you want, it, want to see it the other way, 5 to the 6th uh, is 5 multiplied by each other, so we could say that it's 5 times 5 times 5, and that multiplied by itself twice. That's what we mean by squaring. Therefore, 5 to the 6th is 5 times 5 times 5 squared, uh, but 5 times 5 times 5 is is uh, 5 cubed, so we could say that 5 to the 6th is uh, 5 to the 3rd power all to the 2nd power. And again, all I want to do here is to make you feel uh, and to remember that really you know uh, that this is a legitimate move. Uh, I've transformed my uh, continue the, the uh, compounding formula. I've transformed it uh, from our familiar form to a slightly different one like this, uh, and now transformed it a little bit more. So now we have this figure in here, raised to the power of RT, uh, without doing anything to make it a div fundamentally different. It's still the same equation it was before. Uh, and of course, you'll recognize this. Because that looks very much like our definition for e, just with another variable name uh, substituted. And that's not a significant substitution. Uh, to be more formal about this, I could say that this figure here is exactly what we mean by e, as long as when n goes up, m goes up. So if, if as m, as the variable n expands or goes up without limit, then m, the variable m, will also go up in the same way without limit, and then they're exactly equivalent. So uh, let me review what I did. Uh, I made one single substitution for the formula that we're familiar with, uh, the compounding interest formula. I substituted the new variable, uh, which justified also substituting this variable in the standard format uh, by regrouping. I was able to get this figure, uh, which is equivalent to E, as long as we can work out the question of whether M goes up when N goes up, uh, raised to this power. So now we're getting close to what I promised. Um, with this final step, uh, when N grows, M grows, we could uh, I could reassure you about that by uh, giving a concrete example. So we've by definition said that R over N is equal to 1 over M. Uh, if I decide that uh, N is daily compounding, so a not extremely large, but large enough, N is 360, uh, and the interest rate is 5%, they're in decimal form. Uh, what would I, 1 over m be? Well, I'd have to translate the uh, 0 0.05 into 1 by multiplying it by 20, and I have to keep the fraction consistent by multiplying 360 by 20. Uh, and there we have what we were hoping to see, that uh, as n goes up, uh, m is even bigger. Um, and if we had... If we kept making n bigger, uh, if we compounded every hour of, of the year, so we'd have uh, 360 standard days plus 24 hours, uh, then uh, we'd still have to multiply by 20 
in order to get our equivalent fraction, 1 over n is e equal to, sorry, 1 over m is equal to r over n. Uh, uh, we have, therefore, an even bigger m. Uh, as m gets bigger, uh, m goes on getting bigger and bigger. Uh, I hope that's persuasive to you. Some of you might be wondering, well, you know, that, that it, M seems to get big compared to M when the interest rate is small. What if it's, what if the interest rate is larger? What if the interest rate is, is more than one? Wouldn't we have to reduce M? Uh, I'll leave that uh, for anyone who's still curious at this point to, to work out just with the, uh, uh, the, the clue uh, that a fraction of, a of infinity, half of infinity, is still infinity. Um, but what does that mean? We can see that our standard continue, the standard compound interest form, uh, can be converted to, to this form that we're already getting used to using uh, as the continual interest form uh, with this more convenient figure in the middle of it, uh, which then will allow us to uh, answer questions about uh, growth and also decay of all kinds. And it will make it easier for us to have unknowns for uh, R and T for P sub zero and for PT. It will be, uh, when you get used to it, uh, much simpler than what we've been doing so far. And also uh, more accurate to what usually happens.